Matt, oh my God, you guys flipped Marvel, turned it upside down and made this incredible show that I fell in love with, WandaVision. Uh, congratulations, first and foremost. Thank uh, you. My goodness, thank you. Of course. Now, you've had incredible success in the world of comedy, most notably Always Sunny. Uh, obviously, you've done Game of Thrones also, not so much comedy. But how did that help ease, uh, ease you into your first Marvel Studios experience? You know, this show feels like it's drawing on all of the different experiences I've had as a director in a great way. Like I'm using every tool in my toolkit to get to make this happen because it is, it's comedy, um, it's large scale action, visual effects, um, it's drama. Um, but also, you know, I was a sitcom child actor when I was a kid too. So it really feels like a trip down memory lane, you know, uh, shooting on some of the back lots that I shot on as a kid. So it really is this amazing thing where I'm like, wow, gosh, I, I really didn't realize I was preparing for this job when I was doing all these other things. Now, for as many hit shows as you've worked on, how much does the Marvel experience compare, especially in terms of to any pressure to deliver? Oh man, it's, it's such a joy. I mean, I have been a huge Marvel fan uh, since you know I was a kid. Marvel Comics, Spider-Man was was everything to me when I was four and five years old, um, and still, honestly, to be truthful. Um, and then MCU, you know, when the, when I was right there in the front row on opening day for Iron Man, and have been there for every movie ever since, probably in the same seat, um, you know. And so I am honored to be working on you know an MCU project, and I'm incredibly honored to be you know helping to launch this whole Disney plus Marvel limited series thing that's happening. Um, so, you know, this is, there's certainly, yeah, there's always pressure, but it's, you know, it's, it's mostly excitement and, and just joy. Now, what a way to kick off the MCU, right? It, especially on Disney plus, this is, a, it's so amazing. This show uh, Marvel's known for having some of the best improv lines in the business. How much room was there to, for imp improvisation uh, during the, the shoot? Yeah, we had a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, this is an uh, this show was incredibly collaborative. I have the best cast in the in, in the world, and we had so much fun building this. And when you're doing comedy, you know, it really is about being open to the good idea in the moment. You know, you're uh, as a director, you have to be be sort of working uh, with the 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 magic of what's happening for you, and you know, it's in in front of you. And it's all same with it's always sunny for years. You know. You, you, you go for the, that magic little moment where it all just kind of comes to life and, and, and then you grab it and you hold on to it and then you run with it, you know, and that's, and, and so yes, definitely some lines were changed, things, moments were found, but the writing is beautiful. Jack Schaefer and her team have done an incredible job. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it, it was sort of, you know, a great collaboration from beginning to end. Now, something that really fascinated me is that th there's the usual MCU special effects in this show, but there's also more practical effects uh, that are used more than normal. How much of that was a challenge to you and how, and how did you mesh the two worlds together so fluidly? That was one of the things I really wanted to do from the get go was, you know, when we were working in the sort of 50s, 60s, 70s, was to do things the way they would have done it back then. And so what our first meeting with our special special effects maestro, Dan Sudek, who's won, you know, every award and nominated for a million Oscars, all the big Avengers movies, whatever. Um, I was like, OK, Dan, you're going to get mad at me, but can we do everything on wires and rods? <laughs> and instead of him being like, no, I blow things up. He was like, no, this is the greatest thing ever. He had, he had actually been trained by the guys who had done Bewitched and I Dream of Genie. He came up in the business doing that wow. kind of stuff. And he was thrilled to be able to do it again. And, and you know, actually, it's actually very difficult to do. And it's also, it's kind of like playing a musical instrument that don't no longer exists. Like you had to train, he had to train all of his people to kind of figure it out again um, and dust off those skills. And, and it's, it's really charming, I think. And I, I'm glad we went to all those efforts. I couldn't agree more. It's almost like an, a lost art form, kind of like hand-drawn animation. You know what I mean? It, it, it very much took me back. And it's so funny that you say that because there were times where I completely forgot I was watching an MCU thing. Like I, I almost felt I was transported back into time and, and all the comedic beats were, were step by step right there. It, it was brilliant to watch come together. Um, now, I, I, reports have, have confirmed that it seems like the, the, the team shot the first two episodes only in two days. Uh, was there a similar time frame for other episodes uh, closer to, to like the era that it would have been shot in? So um, the first episode was shot over a couple of days, sort of, you know, like the live, you know, the live studio stuff. Um, the second episode was not, you know, oh. part of what we were doing was adjusting to how they would have made those shows. So, 
the 60s shows, our references were more like Bewitched and I Dream of Genie, and those shows were single camera, like the way you make a movie even today. If four wall sets, not a live audience, you know, recorded laugh track. Um, and so those require a very different approach and, and take more time, obviously, to shoot. Now, uh, if you had the chance to come back, if there is a season two of WandaVision, would you be up for that? Or would you like to explore any other characters outside of Wanda and the Vision in the MCU? I love being a part of the MCU. It's been such a joy. Um, obviously, as a huge fan, um, I would love to stay involved in some way. I don't know. Who knows what the future holds? That's one of the great things about uh, the Marvel Universe. Um, you know, you never know where these characters are going to go or me as a filmmaker. Who knows? Now, uh, having worked on episodes of, of a classic series like Ma uh, Mad Men, you, uh, were you prepared to deal with, I mean, you were obviously prepared to deal with capturing the era for WandaVision, but what nuances and tricks did you use uh, to keep it to keep it Marvel uh, in, in all the episodes. Yeah, I mean, I've worked on a lot of different period things, whether it's Mad Men, where I actually first met Tiana Paris, who uh, plays Monica in right. the show, um, and uh, uh, did a show called The Great for Hulu recently, which is a big period thing. So, you know, it is, uh, whenever you're doing something in period, you have to make sure that your attention to detail is perfect you know every time you open that refrigerator everything in that refrigerator better be exactly the way it should be you know um in the case of a madman of course there's no refrigerators in you know um uh, russia uh at the, the catherine the great's time um but uh in terms of how do you keep it all mcu i mean i think what's so great about this show is that it plays with so many different styles and worlds and um and so we were able to to do a lot of different things and when we were doing something that was a period sitcom we tried to be as authentic to that as possible and um and we were doing mcu and large-scale action stuff we're trying to deliver those you know in the sort of the same way that you would expect from a from an mcu film um the through line through all of it is not so much um stylistic in terms of camera it's storytelling you know it's that this is all one big beautiful little puzzle and it's all being fueled by this beautiful romance between Wanda and Vision and that's the thing that's pulling you through this story. Now the last question I have for you can you can you tell us uh, if your sense of responsibility to the story kind of changed when you found out you'd be the first uh, introduction to phase four due to the uh, the pandemic that's going on and and, and if so uh, how did how did the story change with the extra time to, to work on it? Yeah, nothing changed for us in terms of our narrative or what we were doing in the show when we we, we were got moved to this position. Uh, but I will say that um, it seems kind of wonderful and and fitting that the first uh, Marvel show for Disney Plus is this great love letter to the history of television. You know, it makes sense. It feels right. So I'm glad that it ended up working out this way. It does feel right. And like every episode that I watch is almost like putting like holding a comic and turning a page. And I just... Don't want to put that comic down. So thank you so much for your time. I truly appreciate it. Amazing job on this. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care.